my opinion, there, there's really like three main aspects on which uh, solar energy can help African countries. Um, first of all, it's by, by providing cheaper electricity. 80% uh, of the electricity generated in Africa comes from fossil fuel, uh, notoriously more expensive. Um, and nowadays, with, with the most recent prices of solar energy, we're really reaching very, very low prices. Um, so that, that would be number one. Um, another uh, another way is by uh, making the best use of decentralized generation um, and, and stabilizing the grids. Um, many countries in Africa have this issue of unstable grids um, and by multiplying the, the solar uh, installations uh, along the grid, it's, it's one possible way to, to stabilize the, the energy supply, especially if you think of adding storage capabilities uh, on top of the solar. And then last but not least, um, electricity access. Um, there's an estimated 800 million people in the world that do not have any access to electricity and 600 million of those live in Africa. Um, now, this being said, this is not a um, this is not inevitable because um, through the many solar innovations, um, among which um, solar home systems or mini grids, it's actually possible to, to reach those people faster uh, than by extending the traditional national grid um, and thus provide them with the basic uh, electricity services thanks to solar energy. Well, the private sector will continue playing the role it has already been playing uh, over the past uh, over the past years. Um, in the private sector is already very present on, on many fronts. Um, for example, if you think of the large scale projects, uh, well, IPPs have been around for many years, and there's really no no reason for this to change in the future. It's a successful uh, um, methods of uh, generating and uh, electricity and providing electricity to to users. Um, IPPs are, however, facing a challenge in, in, in the sense that there is a limited number of really large-scale opportunities um, because of technical limitations of the grid. Um, but again, with the evolution of stor uh, storage uh, technologies, um, I expect the private sector to, to gradually come up with more innovative approaches and, and, and that's really what the private sector is about. They need to come up with uh, solutions. Um, if you look at the, the CNI segments, uh, commercial and, and industrial, um, well, there not so long ago, uh, an AFSIA member, Empower New Energy, released a study identifying that solar energy through standalone uh, installation is already cost competitive with the grid in, in roughly 15 African countries. Um, so in this country, solar projects can be undertaken fully by the private sector um, and, yeah, of course, provided that the, the appropriate policies are present in the country to, to allow for such installations. But there it could also be driven purely by the private sector. And then last thing, solar home systems and, and, and mini grids. Um, there also the private sector has been playing a crucial role for the past decade, um, coming up with a very innovative type of solution, um, uh, direct current based solutions. Um, providing the solutions to the, the 600 million Africans who, who do not have electricity access, like I mentioned before. And uh, yeah, every day they are coming up with new projects, new solutions to, 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 to bring electricity to more people. So private sector is already very active and, and, and it will continue to be so. Challenges faced by investors are, are different based on the, the segments that they play in. Um, if you look at the, the large-scale project segment, for example, well, one of the challenges there is the limited number of projects um, and also the tender processes that can take a very long time. Um, so sometimes it can be discouraging for, for, some, of the, for some of the investors. Um, also, Another challenge that they face is even though the, the need is there and even though the grid could actually absorb a large scale project, um, there is an issue with uh, the necessary guarantees and, and, and the risk sharing for such long term projects. Um, and what we have seen, unfortunately, is that many of the large scale projects that are being 
develop, unfortunately, never really uh, reach uh, fruition because of uh, many blocking factors along the road. Um, this being said, uh, an initiative like Scaling Solar, for example, um, is, is, is one interesting way of, of reducing those risks and, and, and providing the guarantees for, for allowing uh, large-scale projects. Um, if you look at a different segment, for example, the, the CNI, there the problem is slightly different. Um, there is an abundance of projects and there is an abundance of money and investors who are eager to, to invest this money. But there the problem is more of a connection and communication between um, project owners and local developers and, and, uh, and investors. Um, there seems to be a little bit of a mismatch, um, maybe a lack of mutual understanding, not speaking the same language. Um, and so, yeah, it is It is our role, for example, uh, at Arsia, but many other uh, organizations are also in charge of this, to, to build this communication and, and, and make people interact. Even if this communication happens, then the other, um, another problem may arise. Um, it's a problem of size. Investors are looking for big tickets to invest, while projects developer, well, they need to start from the bottom and they need to start with a few projects. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem. A developer has a few projects, would like to invest in it and then grow bigger. But investors, they are looking for full portfolios of tens or maybe uh, hundreds of projects to invest in at once. Um, so that would be the, the, the challenge facing investors on, on that particular segment. And yeah, in terms of, um, in terms of governments, um, I think there's really three main things that they could do. Um, first of all, um, and it's, it's understandable, but the, the solar industry evolves very, very quickly. Um, and it's sometimes uh, difficult for governments to, to stay up to date with the latest innovations, the latest solutions that are available in the market. Um, so there may be, it could be helpful if, if there was a platform um, maintaining a yeah, more regular and continued conversation um, between uh, between developers and between manufacturers and, and governments so that there is always a mutual understanding of what is currently possible uh, and what are the latest innovations. Second thing uh, which I believe could be very helpful is if governments would make some limited amounts of uh, local currency financing of Available for local developers that would help them get started with a few projects, build um, experience and build track record and then be ready to, to speak to international investors who are looking for those bigger portfolios that I referred to uh, a little bit earlier. And then final, uh, final uh, thoughts, uh, which I believe could, could definitely help uh, professionalize the industry is if um, local governments were to um, think about ways to um, bring a bit more standardization, training and certification of the local, uh, of the local players um, that would help local SMEs deliver better quality products, better services as well, recognized services, and, and that would help bring a lot more trust in the industry and, and hence a lot more projects being developed. So, uh,